Hi everybody, we're back. Week two, actually, it's the third week of Easter. And let's start with Daniel. I love this book, Daniel 4, 5, and 6 this week, show us Daniel's service to three kings and the three letters that were written during the reign of each of those kings. The first letter, written by King Nebuchadnezzar, telling the powerful and unique story of his experience with the Most High God. Nebuchadnezzar learned the hard way that the God of the Bible is sovereign. It means he rules over all the gods and kings and emperors in heaven and on earth. The Creator God is top. And Nebuchadnezzar experienced this by being humbled, from being the highest king on earth to becoming a wild beast of the field. And this picture shows a classic representation of him at his lowest. And the message is, and this is by Nebuchadnezzar's own hand, written in a letter to all the people in his empire, is that Yahweh rules all the kingdoms of the world. He raises up leaders, he brings them down, and this is what he did in Nebuchadnezzar's own life. And he ends up praising the Most High God because of how Daniel witnessed to him in the court of the emperor. And Nebuchadnezzar wrote all this in a letter that he had sent to all the people in his empire. And it's preserved for us, for you and me, this week in the book of Daniel. Enjoy it. The second letter was written to the king rather than by the king. And this time it's the king Belshazzar, who is Nebuchadnezzar's son. So we've jumped forward now from Daniel 4 to chapter 5, many years to a new generation. And evidently the lesson that Nebuchadnezzar learned was lost upon his son, the king, King Belshazzar. He never learned to reverence the Creator God like his father did. But at a big party that he threw for thousands of his ministers, he transgressed the law of God by taking those vessels of gold and silver that had been plundered from the Jerusalem temple, used in the worship of Yahweh to set the table at his party. And during the party, a hand materializes to write a message on the wall. And here's where we get the phrase, the writing on the wall. And that message announces the end of the Babylonian Empire at the hands of the Persians, who basically ambushed the capital city that night and sacked it. They snuck in and captured it. The message here, again, even for those who don't acknowledge it, like Belshazzar, is that God delivers power on earth to those whom he will, which is a helpful reminder in our post-election madness here in America. Yahweh is sovereign over all the nations of the earth. And then in chapter 6 of Daniel, his service continues in the successor king, who is Darius the Mede, the first emperor of the Persian Empire. And what a grand empire it was. And Daniel is carried forward in his position of honor at the very top of the imperial power structure in the Persian Empire, which makes him the object of jealousy for all those Persian officials who thought that once Darius is, is the head of the whole empire, that they would get the top slot. And so they try to undermine Daniel. It's a familiar tactic, right? I mean, you read it often in the newspapers, engineering the downfall of your political rival. And the result of this plot is the most famous story of the Old Testament, Daniel in the lion's den. Enjoy this picture. And you know the story, of course, but one part of it that, that I personally had not noticed before, didn't really stick to me, is that Darius pens the third letter in this section of the book of Daniel. Like Nebuchadnezzar, the Persian emperor extols 
the power and the goodness of God, the Most High God, and he decrees that everyone within this vast empire that embraced parts of India, the Middle East, all the way into Turkey and fighting against Greece, everyone within this empire shall honor the God of Daniel. Wow. And the point of all this, of course, is that the, is the power of God's people witnessing his reality in this world. Their brave faithfulness in the face of pagan enticement and intimidation, it plants seeds of faith in pagan minds. The faith of Israel is not to be kept to Israel. It's to be shared with the Gentiles, with the Gentile nations. So here's Daniel trusting in the miraculous power of God to work in him, to work through him, even in the belly of the beast, the court of the emperor. He's able to bring God's fame into the highest places at the center, at the power centers of the earth. And from there to have it proclaimed to the ends of the, of the world. It's a pattern that we see again and again in the Bible. And it continues in our life as well. It comes down to every person who follows God being willing to bear courageous witness to his goodness in the face of great power, in the face of enticement and intimidation. Courageous faithfulness bears witness, witnessing not only with our lips, but in our lives. This is how Daniel's fame remains to this day, and it reaches even still in our world into the darkest regions of communist China and North Korea, the darkest regions of the Islamic world, and into your own neighborhood and place of employment, your school here in Loudoun County. So where are you being called to bear witness today? been good to be with you. I'm really enjoying this Bible study. I hope you are too. I'll see you on Thursday.